Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the first lesson. Here, Isaiah condemns those who try to please God through rituals and offerings instead of helping the poor and oppressed. A reading from Isaiah. The vision of Isaiah, son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Isaiah, Jotham, Azad, and Hezariah, the kings of Judah. Hear the word of the Lord, you rulers of Sodom. Listen to the teaching of our God, you people of Gomorrah. What to me is the multitude of your sacrifices, says the Lord? I have had enough of burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts. I do not delight in the blood of bulls or of lambs or of goats. When you come to appear before me, who asks this from your hand? Trample my courts no more. Bringing offerings is fertile. Incest is an abomination to me. New moon and Sabbath and calling of convocation, I cannot endure solemn assemblies with iniquity. Your moons and your appointed festivals, my soul hates. They have become a burden to me, and I am weary of bearing them. When you stretch out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you, even though you make many prayers. I will not listen. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Remove the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do good. Seek injustice, rescue the oppressed, defend the orphan, plead for the widow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured by the sword, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. Part of Psalm 50 is printed in your bulletin. We will say it responsibly by half verses. The Lord, the God of gods, has spoken. He has called the earth and the rising of the sun to Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty. God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him. He calls the heavens and the earth from above. Gather before me, my loyal followers. Those who may have come with me and sealed with the sacrifice. 
Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause. Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, I will bear witness against you. I do not accuse you because of your sacrifices. Consider this well, you who forget God. Whoever offers me the sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me. This reading opens a classic chapter of faith. It begins with a definition, then adds examples of great faith in the lives of individuals in Israel's history. A reading from Hebrews. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith our ancestors received approval. By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land where he had been promised, as in a, the for, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob who were heirs with him in the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundations, whose architect and builder is God. By faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and from this one, as good as dead, descendants were born, as many of the stars in the heaven, and as innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of those died in faith without having received the promises, but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who seek in, speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had the opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven where no thief comes near or no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet, so that they may open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds him so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have left his house to be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. 
You may be seated. <clears throat> Often when I read theology or a book about preaching, in my head I picture the person and assign them what I think they might look like or sound like. Throughout my priesthood, I've had the good fortune to actually hear many of my favorite authors preach or give a lecture. Barbara Brown Taylor, Walter Brueggemann, N.T. Wright, Tom Long, and Fred Craddock. Dr. Craddock wrote one of those textbooks that I used in my preaching class, as well as a commentary on Luke that is one of my favorites. I had him pictured as a tall, lanky body with a deep, mellow voice. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> Every year during homecoming week at the University of the South School of Theology, they host a guest lecture for three sessions over a two-day presentation. Since Swanee was only a three-hour drive from the church I served in Alabama, so I went to hear Dr. Craddock. He was to lecture on Hebrews. I quickly signed up. Dr. Craddock was escorted by a young lady who was surely from the basketball or volleyball team. She was a good foot taller than he was, carrying a stool so that Craddock could be seen over the lectern. Good morning, he began. But his topic was Hebrews. Like any good commentator, he began not with chapter 1, verse 1, but with some good background. Of all the books of the Bible, we know the least about Hebrews. While the King James translators in the early 1600s ascribed it to Paul, no modern commentator today does. Not only is the style much different, but the letters that we know are Paul's but so is the theology, it's just different. If one were to study it, even it has a letter-like beginning that may have been added later, most people think it was a sermon. Most scholars, when talking about the author, simply call him the preacher. Though some have, su some have suggested that it carries no name because it was written by a woman. Maybe the Priscilla we know from Paul's two letters. Maybe. We also don't know when it was written, or from where, or to whom. But the preacher is not writing in a vacuum. He or she sees a pastoral problem. The congregation is exhausted. They're tired. Tired of serving the world. Tired of worship. Tired of Christian ed? Tired of being peculiar and whispered about in society? They were tired of being blamed every time something went wrong just because they didn't sacrifice to the Roman gods. They're tired of the spiritual struggle, tired of keeping a prayer life going, even tired of Jesus. Attendance is down at church and they're losing confidence. But the preacher does not appeal to improve group dynamics, conflict management techniques, reorganizing mission statements, or snappy worship services. He preaches. He assumes that they know their scripture, what we would call the Old Testament, preaching in complex theological terms about who Jesus was and is and what he had done for the whole world. If you're going to study Hebrews, you better have a good knowledge of Jewish scriptures or a Bible with really good footnotes. But without the book of Hebrews, we would not have the high Christology of Jesus that we have today. The vision of Jesus as priest and king, they all come from here. But at this point, the preacher is on a roll not about Jesus, but about them. Look around you, he says. Look at yourselves. 
Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Now, theolo theologians will point out that it is that, but it's much more. But for the preacher's purposes, that's a good enough definition. The Greek word translated as assurance is the same word used to describe as how Jesus reflects on God's being, his hypostasis. And so faith is the very being of God's promises. Faith is the very being of God's promises. Not simply for the future, but for the here and now as well. Faith is the ability to see with the inner eye what cannot be seen by the natural eye. Belief in God that he exists and rewards those who seek him, the preacher says, means to have confidence that God lives and serving this God really matters. <clears throat> Our lectionary skips some of the verses about others that had faith, but skips right to the very best example of faithfulness, Abraham. Abraham was not perfect, but he trusted God. He left everything, parents, home, the known, for the promise that God would make him father of a great nation and give him an unknown land. Faith is not so much a correct belief as it is an action. It is our response to God's grace. It isn't just a noun, but a verb as well. Some quotes from others that I've read. Faith means being grasped by a power that is greater than we are, a power that shakes us and turns us, transforms us and heals us. Surrender to this power is faith. Paul Tillich. Or there's Austin Farrar, an English theologian. If you want to have faith, decide what you would do if you have faith, then do it. That's faith. Or perhaps my favorite is from Frederick Buechner. I'm pretty sure he had the same story of Abraham in mind as the preacher. He says that faith is a process rather than a possession. It is an on again, off again, rather than a one time for all. Faith is not knowing where you're going, but going anyway. Faith is a journey without maps. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
Prayers of the People follow Form 3, found in your service bulletin. Standing or kneeling, let us pray. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Jennifer, our bishop, for Bruce and Bill, our priests, for Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in Russia, Ukraine, Afghanistan, North and Central Africa, North and, North and South America, Middle East, and all in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. Give to Mar Marcia McPherson, who died yesterday, and to all who have departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. <clears throat> Let us pray for our own needs and those of others, especially for the care and healing, healing of Martha D. Pete, Teresa, Robert, Mary Lou, Eric, Bob, Jack, Glenn, Randy, Heather, Corrine, Stan, Linda, Billy, Dustin, Don, Cameron, Kim, Kathleen, Donald, John, Riley, Joan, Kim, Elizabeth, Tammy, Brian, Janet, Erica, Erica Joe, Carol, Nancy, Ann, Horst, Mary, Betsy, Jerry, Mark, Jane, Brittany, Sovo, Carol, Sean, Susan, Daryl, Bill, Susan, Gary, Tracy, Tom, Kurt, Jack, Lee, David, Bob, Ham, Wayne, Xavier, and Michael, and all others in our hearts and minds. Let us pray for relatives and friends of this congregation deployed of danger, areas of danger. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, let us pray for St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Tombstone, Arizona, and let us pray for St. Albans Cathedral, for All Saints Church, Kings Langley in the Diocese of St. Albans, and for the churches dedicated to St. Albans in Whitney Bay, England, Valladolid, Spain, Wilston, Australia, and Newtown Square, Pennsylvania. And let us pray in thanksgiving for the birth of Gerda Carolyn, Bob and Mary Ann Nichols' great granddaughter, and for all the blessings of our life. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. And what we ask, faithfully grant that we may obtain effectually to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. <coughs> Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will 
and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. First, a welcome to all visitors and newcomers. Uh, we do hope you find St. Albans a good place to say your prayers and be with us again. Oh. Rowdy bunches. <laughs> uh, I would say hi uh, to the folks at home. I don't know if they're seeing us or not, but um, no. All right. All right, it's just you folks. You and I. <laughs> Um, all right, first uh, we're going to bless some prayer shawls. Steve, do you want to do some plugs on your uh, pr music programs? If you do, why don't you come up to the microphone while they're doing the uh, prayer shawls? Oh, good. Of course, it's not being taped, so we don't need it, Steve. You can just shout it out. Oh, it is? Well, now she says it is. Be Thank you. Okay, on page seven, in the middle of the page, we're going to dedicate these prayer shawls and lap blankets, etc. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God. He has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. Let us pray. O God, whose blessed Son has sanctified and transfigured the use of material things, receive these prayer shawls which we offer and grant that they may proclaim your love, benefit your church, and minister grace and joy to those who use them through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Ladies, it's been a busy summer. Okay, any birthdays, anniversaries, or travel plans that would like our corporate prayers come forward? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And travel. Okay. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Good. Happy anniversary. How many for you two? 57 years. Great. All right. First for some birthdays, a lot of those. Watch over your children, O Lord, as their days increase. May they increase in wisdom and in stature and in favor with God and man. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
and for those wedding anniversaries. Grant your blessing, O Lord, to your servants, and assist them with your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love, they may continue to honor and keep their vows and promises through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then for those that would travel, watch over your servants, O Lord, while they are apart from us, and keep them safe until we are reunited with one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Um, I don't see her. Um, I just wanted to give you all a good uh, pat on the back. We had a visitor last week that I talked to after the service and she said she had visited in another Episcopal church here in town for five weeks and then no one had yet to come up and introduce themselves to her. Um, she confessed to me after the service was over that she is an Episcopal priest as well as a doctor and told me that in the, her 31 years of ministry she's never found a more welcoming church. Keep it up. <laughs> I mean, um, I forget who it was said that the uh, most important person in church is the next newcomer to walk through the door. And so, um, yeah, good job. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God.
things come of thee, O Lord. And Lord be the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. At the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ had taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Christ, the bread of heaven, body of 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 Christ, the bread of heaven. Jesus Christ, keep you everlasting. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you everlasting. The blood of Christ. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, keep you everlasting. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
In the name of this congregation, I send you forth bearing these holy gifts, that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us the spirit food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you, as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory. Amen. Go forth into the world in peace, be of good courage, hold fast to that which is true. Render no one evil for evil. Support the weak, strengthen the faint-hearted, help the afflicted, honor all people, love and serve the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Amen.